As we walk out the journey of life, we each begin to thirst for something more. We want more than just life the way we know it. It's a thirst for more peace, more fulfillment, more purpose. That was God's plan all along. Since the ancient times, he has made promises that he will quench that thirst. And the promises he made long ago are the same promises he has made for us today. began to speak about the four promises that the Lord had for all of us, and he began to create some language around something that had been in my heart for about 10 years, and so I've, I've really waited a couple years to just preach on this, so it's inspired by actually a book that he wrote, and if you want to grab that book, it's really, really uh, good by uh, Pastor Chris Hodges, and we may have heard about him around here. We we, uh, we we love we love Church of the Highlands and uh, their investment that they're making for the kingdom of God. Now, uh, before before we get started, I do want to tell you this: uh, the four cups, the, the, where that comes from, is the the Jewish culture. What they would do, they would read the four promises of God. And I'm going to read it to you in a minute. If, if you have your Bibles, it's Exodus chapter six, verses six. And after they read the promise, uh, they read the first promise. Which the first promise is salvation. They would take a cup and then they would drink. They would drink the cup, and then they would and, and they talk about it and talk about the goodness of God, and then they would talk about the second promise of God, and then they would take the cup and then they would they would drink it. Now in the Jewish culture, they would drink wine, and so by the fourth promise, they were feeling really good. And so uh, today we're going to give you coffee. We're going to give you coffee. And uh, so, so it's around these four promises. Everybody say promise. A promise, a definition of a promise is this. It's an offer with a guaranteed result. I love that. It's a promise with a guaranteed result. Second Peter 1 and 4 says this. God has given us great and precious promises so that through, through them you may be able to participate in the divine nature of God and escape the corruption of this world. And so I love these two things. It's saying that we will be able to take on the nature of God and also escape the corruption of this world. How many, does that sound good to anybody around here? That sounds awesome. I, I do want to pause and just give a shout out. I've, I've got some dear friends, Daniel and Amber, and I think, I don't know if the girls are in here, but man, this is my people. This is my people. And also, we, we have some first-time guests last week that is back today. I love it when you come one time. I really love it when you come twice. And I am so pumped up. I know M, M's already said it, but our 915, we have an incredible crowd at 915. And look here, 11 o'clock. Guys, let me tell you something. God's doing amazing things at Hope Church. I'm excited about the future, but I sure am enjoying today. I'm enjoying today. And so here, here's the four promises laid out. In Exodus chapter 6, verse 6, and so uh, let's read it together. It says, therefore, say to the Israelites. And so if you know the story of Moses, this is when Moses really had the burning bush experience. And the Lord told him, say, go and tell my people it's time to come out of bondage. And, and, and Moses was like, I don't know if they're going to believe me. I don't know if they're really going to want to go. But the Lord said, you tell them these promises, and these are some things that I'm making uh, with my people. So it, it, here it is. It says, therefore, say to the Israelites, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out. I am the Lord, and I will bring you out. And so and so this this first part here, it, this is salvation. He says, I'll bring you out. And, and, and around the story of, 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 of it, the Israelites, they were in bondage for 400 years. And, 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 and reason, the, one of the reasons that, and I guess the greatest reason, that these promises are very important for all of us to know 
is really, it's a, spiritual, it's a spiritual journey for us all. It's a spiritual journey for us all. And when you look at these four promises, you can really answer the question, what is my next step? What is, what is, what is it that God has for me? In the Jewish culture, they even called this the four I wills of God. Look at all these promises. It's something that God's saying, I will do this. I will bring you, I will bring you out. He wants to help you to get out of the current condition, the current situation that you're in. He said, I'll bring you out of the yoke, from under the yoke. You're under something that's heavy. You're under a bondage of slavery. And, and for them, slave, for, for them, they were literally under uh, a slavery under the Egyptians. And this is called the cup of salvation. And we're going to talk about that today. But the second thing, and you'll see it right here, he says that I will free you. Now, just, just, just lean in. I'm going to do some teaching today. But go on this journey with me. It's important that I will free you is second and not first. It's because to, to, to truly have freedom, you need to have a coming out experience with God. You need to have a salvation experience with God. And let me just, just say it like this. Some people just kind of say, well, I, I'm, I'm going to clean up, and then I'm going I'm to I'm 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 come to God. I'm going to get things clean, I'm going to get things right, and then I'm going to come to God. No, no, don't do that. Guys, we don't clean up to get to God. We go to God so that we can clean up. I mean, that's just the way it works. And so it's the salvation moment, and then he says, I will, I will free you. And, 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 and maybe many, many may say, hey, I thought I, I thought I just received that all as salvation. As salvation, you were completely forgiven. But I'm telling you, a lot of us saved folks, we still need some freedom in our life. Emily said amen. That's deliverance. And so, and so the next part is, he says, I will redeem you. And I'm kind of giving you an overview of these. In the next couple of weeks, I'm going to go through these. But the next one says, I will redeem you. And that promise is this. I'm going to bring you back to your original intent. I'm going to bring you back to the original intent. And, and I, I just want to kind of just uh, make mention of this, that statistically, 87% of Christians never get to this promise. They're saved, and, and they'll find a level of freedom, but they never really discover their purpose, and they never get to the point where they're working and operating in their purpose. So that's just, that's just amazing, and we, we here at Hope Church, we want to be very intentional about helping you discover your purpose, really get to this, really get to this next point. And then the, next, the last thing is this, he says, I will redeem you with outstretched arms and with mighty acts of judgment. He said, I'm, I'm going to redeem you, I'm going to redeem you. And then, and then he says, I'm going to take you as my own. I'm, I'm going to take you on, I'm going to make you part of my people. I'm going, to give, I'm going to get you in a group. And I want you to say this. When you look at the first three promises, it's all about you. The last promise, it says this. He says, I will take you as my own people. He's saying, I want to get you into a family. I want to get you into a life group. I want to get you into a growth track. I want to get you on a dream team. Because I'm telling you, you will never have the life, the fulfillment in life, until you are doing something for God that really matters. With a group of people, with, with, with a group that's saying, hey, I'm doing something that truly, truly matters. Even sociologists knows this. That's what Maslow's hierarchy of needs discovered. Maslow's hierarchy of, of human needs says this, that the highest, the highest level of living is when you are making a difference here on earth. When, you, when you're really making a difference on earth. And I love this part here. It says, when you really come to a place where you are fulfilled, and that's the promise, the fourth promise is fulfillment. He says, then you will know that I am God. You will see, you will see God just on a whole new, fresh level. And I, I just want to just I, I lean in. Let me give you a little bit of theology here. Uh, I, I've really been studying the, angel, the angels in heaven as they circle the throne of God. And, and I read one commentator said this, that, that uh, just as, as he began to do the research, that he, he found that every time that the angels circle around God, they just see a different part of God. And I just, I just prayed and I just said, God, I've been serving you now since I was seven years old. 
But as I circle in this 21 days of prayer, as I go to you in this prayer and fasting, I want to see new and fresh things about you. I'm going after new levels of freedom. I believe and know that there is more, and I want to experience all that God has for me. Mm. So here it is. Let me kind of give you a review. This is the four promises of God. They'll put on the screen is salvation. It says, I will bring you out. There's freedom, saying, I will free you. Then there's restoration. That's what he says, I will redeem you. And then there's fulfillment. He says, I'm going to take you as my own family. I'm going to put you into a family. I'm going to, I'm going to give you a life group. I'm going to put you on a dream team so that you can really be fulfilled. You can really be fulfilled. And, and so what we have done here at Hope Church is we have created all of our programming, everything that we do around these four promises of God. The salvation part, if you want to just look at exhibit A on the back wall, it's called No God here at, Find, here at Hope Church. Uh, the freedoms is called, come on somebody, get a little audience participation here. And then the restoration is called, well, I love this, and the fulfillment is called Make a Difference. Make a Difference. I, I, I want to show you something. This, this is exciting. This is really fun. And so just go ahead and get this, this slide uh, ready for me right here. We just really, and I can say it like this, our why behind the know God is we want to see lost people saved. How many people are excited about getting lost people saved? In the 9, the 915 service, I didn't do this in the 915 service. I saved this for y'all for the 11 o'clock service. But I want to say this. Uh, Hope Church is, is not just about, uh, I know some people just, that their whole focus is just seeing lost people saved. And I want to see lost people saved. But Hope Church is also about finding people that know that there is more than just a just a shallow end of the pool. And you just tell them, come on to Hope Church. We're going to show you deeper things in God. We're going to point you that way. It's because we want to help you get to your next step. And I believe that we as Christians, we just kind of got settled at the, and we got satisfied at the shallow end of the pool. And now here's a promise I make to you here at Hope Church. We will always have the shallow end of the pool. But I'm always going to point you to the deeper end. I'm always going to point you to go deeper. There's more in God. There's a next step for you. And for for some of you, it's just that time to say, I know there's more. I know there's always been more. And it's time for me to go deeper in Christ. Come on, somebody. There's more. There's more. There's more. And so lost people say we call this no God. And then how we do this is our weekend services. And then once saved people, we want to get them pastored. And then we call this find freedom. And how do we do this? We do this in life groups. And let me just pause and tell you this. If, if you are not in a life group and you're kind, of, you're kind of wondering, should I get in a life group or should I not? Let me just go ahead and tell you, yes, you should. Yes, you, well, yes, we, we're, we're, not, we're not a church with life groups. We're a church of life groups. I mean, this, this is what we do. Because life moves at the speed of relationships. And if you're not doing life with someone, and if you're not doing life together, you are not experiencing all the promises and all that God has for you. Amen. And I'm pumped out. Man, we have a Serve Life group that is launching uh, here. uh, Laura Laura and Matt is going to be launching this out. It's it's called Living with Purpose. Am I correct? Living with Purpose. And man, it's going to be incredible touch points in our community. Uh, Freedom. Everybody say freedom. If you haven't, if you have not been a part of freedom, I, I, I feel a little bit of passion around life groups right now. If, if you've never been through uh, the life group freedom, go through it. Just go through it. Go through it. It will change your life. It'll change your life. Come on, somebody. Somebody in the South. Incredible. And if God will help us, we're going to have a freedom life group. We've had two semesters where we have not been able to do a freedom life group. And so in Jesus' name, we're going to have one the first of May. Anybody believing with me? I'm, man, I'm ready for a freedom conference. But anyway, life groups. And so pastor people trained, and we do this. Uh, we call this Discover Purpose. And we do this in growth track. And so I, I encourage you, if you want to know more about Hope Church, and the reason I'm doing this is just sometimes we just need to know the vision of the house. It's been a little while since so I've really just taken time and just, just told you, hey, this is the vision of the house. Get in growth track. That's the last Sunday this month. We're doing it in one Sunday, one Sunday and one Zoom call. 
and you can be plugged in here at Hope Church. And so that's amazing. And then we, we do train people, mobilize. Let me tell you, the hope of the world is the local church. Let me say it better than that. The mo- a mobilized church is the, is the hope of the world. It's when the church gets in action, when the church starts inviting, when the church gets pumped up. I'm telling you, things begin to happen. We call that make a difference, and we do that in dream teams. And let me just pause and say this. I declare and prophesy over Hope Church. This is going to be our best yet, this best year yet. We will see a harvest this year. I was talking to so, I was talking to someone earlier this week at Cadoba. Y'all, the Spirit of God moves at Cadoba. He's at Ivy. I, I was eating with Ivy the other night, and uh, she looked at me. And we was at another Mexican restaurant. It wasn't Cadoba, and she looked at me. And she said, I, "I would prefer the white taco at Cadoba." I said, "Sweetheart, me too." I'm like, "Hey, man!" I say, "Yeah, we 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 tight." But I was talking to someone at Cadoba, and they just looked at me, and they, they said, "They said, man." I just got to tell you, I walked in I walked in the other day for the first time at Hope Church, and so when I walked through the doors, I couldn't hardly contain myself. I just feel to tell you, you need to get ready. In the next, in the next two years, you're going to be running over 400 people. I just said, I received that in the Jesus' name. Y'all, come on. I believe it. Woo. Amen. And so I got all excited, and I think I ate two tacos. I mean, it was just exciting. And so here it is, you, the, four, the four promises of God, and I'm going to hang out on the first promise. The first one, he says, I will bring you out from under the yoke. God says, that's the first thing I want to do for you. I, I, want, I want to really bring you out, helping you find, but before I help you find your purpose, and all those other things I talked about, I want to help bring you out. That is called the cup of salvation. And some of you, you are really, really, really thirsty. And I want to tell every one of you that there is a longing and there's a thirst that cannot be quenched other than the salvation of Jesus Christ. There's some things that will never, never satisfy. This is God's greatest desire. This is God's greatest desire. It's his first promise. It is our first step. The original story just of, 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 of the children of Israel coming into Egypt. The reason that they come to Egypt is because they, they, they had a food shortage. And if you remember the story, Joseph had went on to Egypt. Joseph was elevated in Egypt. And so all the Israelites come to Egypt for food. Well, the Pharaoh that was there favored, uh, the, the Pharaoh favored uh, Joseph and said, I'm going to feed the people and I'm going to give them homes. I'm going to bless them. So all of Israel, they come to Egypt, and they were, they were in, 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 a, in a place called Goshen, and it was flourishing. They had food. They had houses, and then they began to multiply. They began to have a whole lot of children. And so the Pharaoh that knew Joseph, he died, and uh, Joseph passed on, and there was another Pharaoh that come into, uh, come into power that he did, not, he did not know and did not remember the goodness of God, and he did not remember Joseph. And so he says, all of the Israelites are multiplying to such a point that they're going to take over our nation. And so I have to enslave them, have to enslave them so that they will stop multiplying. I have to put them in bondage. And so he began to force them into mud pits, mud pits, begin to force them to make bricks. And matter of fact, the children of Israel made was part of making the, many of the wonders of the world, the different pyramids and different what things. That was the Israelites. When they were under, in, in slavery, they're in, under the Egyptian slavery. They made these huge pyramids and great different artifacts. They were forced into that. But here's something that's applicable, and I really want you to lean in here. As I look at the bondage that the evil Pharaoh put them under, here's what I discovered, and check this out. The same spirit that was on that Pharaoh to treat them that way is still alive today. To put God's people into bondage. Like bondage hasn't changed. The yoke of bondage still exists today. I want to show it to you because there's there's three ways and there's three decrees 
that Pharaoh decreed in three ways that he began to, to enslave God's people and to get them to settle. Three decrees. And I just wanted to say this, that it is the devil's goal, it is the enemy's goal to keep you into slavery, to keep you in bondage. So, so the first way, first way is, is, is he forced them, he forced them to make bricks. And I, I want to just pause and say this, I, I looked up the word slavery in this context, and a lot of times we, we attach slavery to being a slave to a person, and that is a type of slavery but there's also a different defin- there's another definition and the definition of slavery is this any time that you're forced to submit to a dominating influence any time that you're forced to submit to a dominating influence you can be a slave let me just make this very practical you can be a slave to your habits you can be a slave to your spending you can be a slave to bitterness drugs alcohol Addictions. You, you can have these things, and, 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 and some people say it like this. He's like, I don't even like, I don't like, I don't even like what I'm doing, but I'm so influenced by it. I'm so drawn in by it. I feel forced, and I'm dominated by this influence. And I'll just say something. There is a promise from God for you. And so the first decree that Pharaoh decreed over the children of Israel, let me get a little bit of feedback there. The children of Israel is this thing. He said, I'm going to force you to make bricks. And so some of you today, you may say, this is how I'm feeling. I, 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 feel, I feel enslaved. I, I feel enslaved. Watch, watch this verse in what Jesus said in John chapter 8. He says this. He, Jesus said, I tell you most solemnly that anyone who chooses a life of sin is trapped in a dead end life, and is in fact a slave. A slave is is a transit. It, it, he wants to go places, but the Bible says he cannot go at his will. You probably said it like this: I feel trapped. I feel trapped by debt, by relationships, uh, by expectations of others. Maybe you say I feel trapped, and I feel enslaved by guilt, fear, anger, bitterness. Schedule, habits, slavery to sin. It's those areas that that is a dominating influence. And if this resonates, if any of this resonates on the inside of you, I want to tell you that God has a promise for you. He says, I will bring you out. I can bring you out. You come here today and you're saying, hey, I feel like there is more. I believe that God can do more in my life, I come to tell you that the first step is salvation. So the first decree that he did, he said, I'm going to make you make bricks. I'm going to put you in the mud pit. The second decree that Pharaoh made to the children of Israel was, I'm going to murder all of the babies. I'm going to murder the male babies. This is, this is, this is not just a, a biblical uh, uh, fact. History brings this out, and we know this from historical records outside of the Bible. We know that this is true, an absolute fact, that in this time they would, uh, because of Pharaoh's decree, they would take the baby boys and they would throw them into the Nile River. The Nile River was known to have the most vicious crocodiles living inside of it. And so they would throw their baby boys into the Nile River and the crocodiles would, would take them. In essence, what Pharaoh was trying to do He was trying to destroy the upcoming potential. I I, I want to preach to you today. The enemy, is he's not after your past. He's after your potential. He's after, you see, we're not just human beings. We are human becoming. And that is what makes the enemy nervous. He, oh, come on. He's not, he's not nervous so much about your story or your history. But he's really, really, really nervous about what you're becoming right now. He, he's nervous about, I am grabbing a hold of a promise. I'm grabbing a hold of something that God has spoken to my life. And what I'm going to be is going to be greater than what I have been. My list of dreams is a lot longer than my list of memories. Come on, watch out, devil. I'm awake. 
In, in fact, let me say it this way. For generations, it's been happening. And today, that spirit is still alive. They want to kill the babies, knock out, smut out the potential. And let me just say it like this, very clear and very plain. Abortion is wrong. It's a spirit that is saying, I want, to ta- I want to take the potential that's coming up. Maybe there's a David. Maybe there's a Daniel. Maybe there's an Esther. Maybe there's, maybe there's just a Samson that's about to be born. And if we can snap them out early. But I'm just telling you something. God has a basket ready for a Moses. We need to make sure it's built. We can put our Moses in it because the potential is going to survive. Woo! How can you be so sure about the potential? It's because I have a promise. I am linked. I am rooted. I am anchored in the promise of God. Throughout history, the enemy has always tried to destroy your potential. This represents what the enemy tries to do. Pharaoh literally was taking the children. In your life, in your life, maybe you say it like this. I feel empty. I feel empty. See, see, with Pharaoh, the first thing he did, he, he, he put him in slavery. And for us, we feel enslaved by dominating influences in our life. Maybe addictions and, and anger, bitterness, jealousy, lust. You feel enslaved, but now when he, when he began to kill the babies for us, you may just say, I feel empty. You come here and you've had so many voices over your life telling you that you'll never become anything that you just started believing it. You feel, you're feeling empty. And I, I'm just telling you something. God doesn't need anything more than what you have in your life to allow and to make you into what he has called you to. You're like, you're like man, if, if I had a different last name, let me tell you, I don't care if your name is Boudreaux. God can take you into higher heights. I mean, you may say, you may say, boy, if my if I just had a different family, let me tell you, God can take you from any family. God can take you from any situation, and He can elevate you. It's just a matter of just saying, God, I surrender all to you. My potential is not lying in what somebody said to me, but I am listening carefully of what do you have to say about me. And so it's the truth, it's the human nature, we all have this thirst, longing and questions, is there more, is there more? And here's the third thing, I'm just giving you uh, some things from the original story. You see, see, let me just say it like this, the greatest tra- tragedy in life is not death, it's going your entire life without knowing your purpose. Why don't I feel more meaning? Here's questions we ask, why, why is the issue emptiness? And I'm telling you, that's what salvation is all about. That's what salvation is all about. It's saying, hey, there is a purpose. There's a reason. There's a reason you were born. I love you. I love you. The third, the third decree that Pharaoh decreed to be able to control the people was this. He required them to collect their own straw. Now, now lean, lean into this and just just just, just let, let let me teach you a little bit about this. If if you'll read Exodus chapter three, four, five, and six, you'll get this story. But I, I'm 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 going to help you out. I'm just going to kind of paraphrase it for you. And so the children of Israel, they're out making, are working twelve hour days, making bricks and making all these pyramids. And so it, uh, Moses comes and he says. Hey, guys, the Lord has spoke to me, and he has some great promises. God will bring you out. God is going to free you. God is going to redeem you, and God's going to give you a life of fulfillment. Well, they get real excited. They go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh says, I'm going to make it even harder on you. He makes them find their own straw. Why is this important? The Israelites is already, they're already working 12-hour days. And what would happen is when they went out to the mud pit and began to make bricks, the straw was already provided for them. And so what Pharaoh said, Pharaoh said, I not only want you to work 12 hours in this day, but I want you to get up even earlier to go find your own straw. And so, so I, think, I think what it is, is, is the enemy not only wants, wants to, to get us 
uh, uh, feeling, feeling enslaved or just feeling empty. But he also wants us exhausted. What the enemy cannot destroy, he just seeks to wear out. That's good preaching. I'm amen myself on that one. What the enemy cannot destroy, hear pastor right now. What the enemy cannot destroy, he just seeks to wear out. Slavery wasn't enough. Pharaoh makes them to get up earlier to get their own straw. Now he adds more to the pile, extra work. People say, I'm tired all the time. I just can't keep up the pace. I'm overloaded. I'm stressed out. I'm stressed to the limit. <laughs> My patience level is low. I'm getting angry easily. I want to I, 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 I help you right now. Burnout doesn't come from how much you do. It comes from doing things that, you, that has no purpose. You feel exhausted. Here's how you know it's a spiritual issue and not just a time issue. It's because I don't think burnout comes from doing too much. I think burnout comes from doing too much that doesn't matter. Burnout doesn't come from how much you do. It comes from doing things that have no purpose. Let me just, just lean in, lean in. That's why you can go on a vacation and get no rest. Come back exhausted. It's because, let me tell you, rest is not inactivity. It's a condition of your soul. I want to teach you, and this, this part right here is the Lord really had on my heart. That's why, that's why I lead you the way I'm leading you. In January, take 21 days and pray and fast. Before, before you get your motor running, before you steal your tires, pray. Like, like go to God in prayer and get your soul where it needs to be. Get your spirit, because rest, true rest, isn't, doesn't come from inactivity. It is a condition of your soul. And here's, here's the deal. If you feel enslaved, if you feel empty, or, or you feel exhausted, you're a candidate for the very first promise. It is a promise of salvation. You may be here today a little tired, a little worn out, maybe on the edge or feeling like giving up, but I want to tell you something. I've been praying for you. I've been praying for you. I've been calling many of your names and been praying over you. That God, even when they're tired, even when they're exhausted, and, and I, I just want to pause and just say this right here. Some of you, you're exhausted and you're tired and you're making life decisions. Slow down. Can, can I pastor a little bit right now? People get tired, get exhausted. I, I, I've said this all my leadership life. Tired people get hurt fast. If I'm looking on the field and somebody's been playing a long time, I'm really cautiously looking at them because they're going to be the fastest ones to get hurt. And so if you've been going at it and you've been all on your 2020 and you've been just huffing and puffing and just moving and moving and moving, it's time to protect your spirit. Find a place in prayer. We have another week where we're going all in in prayer. If you know me, you know this. People come to me and just say, Hey, I need you to make this decision. I need you to make this decision. I always tell people, I'll talk to you on day 22. There's a lot of amens in this house because y'all know it's the truth. And matter of fact, something else I've brought in my life, I learned from uh, 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 General uh, Colin Powell. General Colin Powell said this. He said, I don't make any major decisions late at night. After the sun goes down, I, I won't make any major decisions unless it is a national uh, emergency. It's because he said, I'm already tired from the day. He said, I'll see you in the morning. And so what I'm telling you is this. Some of you need to kind of hit pause button and go to God and let him renew your spirit so you can see some things clearly. Before you call that a strike, make sure the dust is cleared and you know exactly where the position is. Because what the enemy cannot defeat, he just seeks to wear out. Just exhaust you, get you just ran, ra run ragged. And I'm telling you, the first thing that will go is going to be your church life. It, it, it's not, it's not going to be bowling. It's going to be Jesus. Come on, somebody. And I, I just want to say it like this. If you can go everywhere else, you can come to church. I mean, it's just, guys, we, we, we've got to make the main thing the main thing. And the enemy, and it's, it's like this, man, all these other things are important. Let me tell you, 
Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he'll add everything else. It's time to go all in. It's time to say, God, this is the most important. This is the most important. And so he's, so he's like this. He said, I want you to also do this for me. I want to exalt you. I want you to exalt me. John 10 and 10 says, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. I've come that you might have life, have it more abundantly. And so the enemy said, I want to steal, I want to kill, and destroy. But here's the power, guys. The power is this. The good news is this, that there's resurrection power living inside of you. Romans 8 and 11 says, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Some of you need to get revelation of this right here. Man, I, this, this fires me up. He says, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And so you may have dead dreams. You may have dead desires. You may be exhausted. You may feel enslaved. You may, you may just feel empty. But I'm telling you, let the spirit of God begin to resurrect. I mean, get your passion back. Get your joy back. And just say, God, I, I'm feeling all these emotions. I'm just wore out. But God, just give me the peace from heaven. Give me the joy from heaven. And the Bible says he will cause you to rest. He will give you a heavenly rest. He said the, the same spirit lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living in you. Oh, that's good stuff, man. It says this. Uh, uh, Therefore, dear brothers and sisters. You have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. Ah, that's the power. So here's the breaking of this dominating influence in your life. It says, when you get the Spirit of God living inside of you, you are no longer under obligation just to do what it dictates you to do. Like, like I, I honestly believe and still believe that God can break addictions. I feel like saying that again. Y'all, I've been pastoring now for about 23 years, and I can just tell you something. I've seen God break addictions. God can still do it. God, God can touch a jealous heart and just make them a loving person. God can take bitterness and make them better. God can, God can turn it from lust to love. God can do amazing things. God can take the addictions. Let me tell you something. I've seen people addicted to all kind of stuff. And when the power of Jesus comes in their life, it breaks it. And I'm telling you, you can leave here brand new today. So you don't have to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. It says, for if you live by its dictates, if you do everything that it tells you to do, you will die a spiritual death. But through the power of the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature. It says, this is how you're going to do it. And for some of you, you've been, you've been operating in your own will. You've been operating in your own way. But God says there's power beyond that. The power. It says, through the power of God, you're going to do this. It says, for all who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. For you have not received the Spirit that makes you fearful slaves. I love this. Instead, you've received God's Spirit when He adopted you as His own children. Now we cry out, Abba, Father. I love that. I love that. We can just say, Daddy, I need you. And by the power of the Spirit, that worship team is come on back. And, and, and guys, let me just tell you this. You have, you have a Father. You have a Daddy. And one of the most, one of the most empowering things, one, one of the incredib- most incredible moments, is when one of my kids looks up at me and says, Daddy, I need you. Y'all, there's not a wall I won't bust through. There's nothing I won't, there's nothing I won't do. I mean, like, one of the greatest joys of my life is to, is to do something for my children. And they have that big smile on their face. It's like, it's like when, 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 when my kids are happy, I'm happy. And so we, we have that. We have that. And that's the cup of salvation. That's the cup of salvation. So before before I close, I want to answer two questions. And they're, they're really the, the, the two most important questions of the day. I just gave you that, that, that foundation and that first promise of salvation. Drink that cup of salvation. Number one is, 
how did we how did we get here? Number two, how do we get out? Like the promise is I'll bring you out, but how do we get out? So how do we get here? Maybe you just drift here. You're busy. You didn't mean to you didn't mean to drift. Maybe someone led you away. Maybe you got into a wrong relationship. Um, matter of fact, I'll say it like this. I don't think anyone ever intends to drift away. It just doesn't flip or slip. It's just, that's why today I'm, as a pastor, I'm kind of just stirring up a little bit of you. It's stirring up a little bit of that gift inside of you, stirring up a little bit of passion inside of you. Because you know and I know, it's easy to skip one day of prayer. And after that first day, you're kind of like, man, I, I, I missed that. But that second day of prayer, it's like, mm. that third day you haven't prayed, fourth day. And then it's two to three weeks, and you haven't had a God moment. I, I, I'm just kind of want to sit beside you. It, it's, it's kind of like at a, if you, you ever had a stop sign and it turns green, and, and you're just kind of just looking at the signs and stuff. Somebody comes behind you and they go, honk, honk. They're like, time to move. I, I, I'm just coming beside you like, CD, time to move. Time to move. Hey, hey, God, you, you all on me. How did I get there? Maybe, maybe you had a bad experience. Maybe you had a bad experience with church, religion. Maybe you're a little angry. Maybe, maybe it's some things that they said. Maybe family, authority, figure in your life. You thought it was, man, a bad situation. But here's the thing, guys. The enemy is using all that to enslave you. To take your potential away. And then to exhaust you. Hear me today. Hear me. Give me a few more minutes. The enemy influences that I don't even like. anger and bitterness and jealousy and sin and addiction. And if I'm honest, the potential that you place inside of me, it's been a long time, Lord, since I just dreamed and went all in. And Lord, if I'm real honest, I'm exhausted. We're out. So God, I give you my heart today. Forgive me. I just really, really go and repent. The scripture says this, come out, come out. That's the scripture there in Corinthians. It says, come out. Hear that? The Lord said, I will bring you out. And here's the action. Come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord. Quit, quit touching those things that you should not touch. And, and for, for some of you, it's, 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 it's some shows. You need to quit watching those shows. Like, like it's not wrong to watch shows, but the shows that you're watching, it's just a little bit too much. And for some of you, you need to dial some things back that is not necessarily wrong, but at the level that it is in your life, it is wrong. Is all right today? And, and some of the conversations that, like, you've been having, you need to quit having them because they're negative. They're weighty. They're wearing you down. And that's the enemy's, that's the enemy's the whole, whole idea. That's his whole goal is to get you just weighted down, to get you exhausted and get you in bondage. I heard someone the other day, and man, I, 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 had, I had to kind of just shake it, but uh, someone was talking, and they began to talk about a hardware store. I mean, come on, somebody. I was like, I, I didn't even see it coming. It come out of the blue, and they're like, all that place is, it's just a, it's just a gossip circle. Y'all, I didn't think much about it. I just, I just like, that was weird out of the ordinary and I just, I just I just moved on with my life I found myself passing that hardware store looking over like, hmm, I wonder what's going on right there I know what's going on about the fourth day that I passed that hardware store and I felt in my spirit or not my spirit I felt and I heard that person saying that's just a gossip place and I was just like that's just a gossip place and then the spirit of the Lord quit just hit me and just said you don't know that 
you need to you need to throw that out of your mind. You need to forget that that was said. Uh, that's my children over there. That's not a gossip place. And so, in other words, what I'm telling you, there's some things that just stick that need to get unstuck. Everything that attaches itself for to you is not for you. Just because it attaches does not mean it needs to stay. Some stuff needs to stay in 2020. Come on, somebody. And so repent, 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 repent. And so like if you've, you've repented, and that, that's changing directions. Next thing is to be baptized. I love this. Romans 6 and 4 says, We are therefore buried with him through baptism and to his death in order that just as Christ, love this, love this, was raised from the dead to the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Tim, lean in. So how do we get out? Repent. Be baptized. Number three, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. I mean, like, there's more. There's more. I I started to name this series, There's More. (laughs) Because here, be be filled with the Spirit. And so at the birthday of the church, Peter stood up. He had the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And here's what he said. He said, everybody, repent of your sins. Then the next thing he says, in Acts 2, 38, he says, repent. And then he says, be baptized, every one of you. Uh, every, like, every one of you be baptized. He said, because this is going to be the, for the forgiveness, for the remission of your sins. And I want you to really watch this. He says, and then you will be filled, you shall be filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you've never been filled with the Spirit, I'm just telling you something. It's a promise for you. I love verse 38. I really love verse 39. It says, for this promise, for this promise for you, for your children, as far as many as the Lord our God, as for all that are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. Let's stand to our feet today. I want to give you a word give you a word right here that is really a game changer. It's the word commit. It's like, over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to go through these promises. And these promises are really points of, to say, all right, where, where are we at? And today we're talking about the cup of salvation. But here's the thing. Commit your life. Because if all you do is walk away from one thing, and you don't pursue something else, you're always going to come back. And so today, what I'm telling you is this, is yeah, lay these things down. Come out from that that bondage. Come out from that, that emptiness. Come out from that exhaustion. Come out from those addictions. But pursue God. Like, pursue God. Pursue the promises of God. Like, like, God, if it's available, I want it. (laughs) God, if it's available, I want it. So today, all over this place, the worship team's about to start. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're in here today and you say, y'all, something stirred in my heart today. We had, I believe, I believe 11 people at our first service gave their heart to God. And so here at this service, you're just saying, something's stirring inside of my heart today. And I'm ready to go for it. Either committing for the first time or recommitting, recommitting my life today. Come on, just throw that hand up. Throw those hands up all over this place. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, just keep those up. Wow, wow. Come on, let's go for it, guys. God's got it available for us. Now, why don't you just lift that other, other hand up? And I think we've got like 13 people right now. Now, all over this place, just lift up those hands. Open up those hands. Come on, God's doing a work. Bow here now. Jesus, you change everything. Come on, let's go for it. Life heal. Oh, bow here. Now, come on, sing it out. 
Jesus, you change everything. Change. Oh, come on. It's happening right now in this house. Here right now. Jesus, you change everything. Lies. Heal. Come on, this healing taking place. Oh, found. Jesus, you change. Come on, sing it again. Change has to fall. Fear has to bow. Here and now. Jesus, you change everything. Come on, change fall. Lives healed. Hope found. Jesus, you change everything. Change. Oh, come on, let's go for it. Has to bow. Here, right now. Jesus, you change everything. I love this right here. Lies. Come on, be a redeemed. Yes. Jesus, come on, sing it again. Chains fall. Chains fall. I hear chains falling in this house. Pursuing your glory. Show us your glory. Let your spirit fill this house. Show us your glory. Let every burning heart be. Come on, just speak that. Say, God, cover my whole. Show us your glory. Come on. Just pray and say, God, cover my children with your glory. Lord, I speak, I speak for potential in my children. I speak against everything that would stop them. Lord, I'm asking you for the peace of heaven, for the rest of heaven. God, give us your glory. Come on, lift your voice in this house. Show us your glory. seconds. coming out. We're coming out. Just say this, guys. The children of Israel begin to come out. The Red Sea opened. The impossibility opened. And they walked through it. I want you to look up here because I want to tell you one thing. I've got a, I got a word. I got a word for somebody here today. The Red Sea opened up when the children of Israel and over four million of them walked on dry land through the Red Sea. And when they got to the other end, Bethany, the Lord spoke to Moses. And the first time I see the Lord telling them to look back, he said, Moses, tell the people to look back. And they look back. And he said, Moses, you tell them that the enemy that's been chasing them for the last 400 years, they will not see them anymore. 
And I speak and declare over somebody here today. There's some addictions. There's some spirits. There's some attitudes. And there's some things you're not going to see no more. You're coming out today. Come on, somebody receive that in this house. Come on, you receive that. Thank you, Jesus. I love you so much, old family. If you consider Hope home, this is part of your worship is in giving. They'll put the giving slides up. If you're a guest in this house, we have no expectation of uh, you giving today. This service is, is our gift to you. Matter of fact, we want to give you a gift. If you'll tag him with us, if you feel comfortable, I'll be masked up. Come up and see me. I've got a gift for you. I'd love, I'd love to give you a gift uh, today. But Hope family, if you consider Hope home, there's giving boxes in the back. You can place that. Also, I'd love to pray for you this week. I'd love to pray for you. So just write down your prayer requests. Put those in the giving boxes in the back. And, uh, and, and, and I promise you this. I'm going to be here 6 o'clock in the morning, Monday through Friday, and 9 o'clock on Saturday. And I'm going to take your prayer request, and I'm going to lift it up to God. And I'm going to say, God, you know all about this. And I'm telling you, I already know of three miracles that happened just last week. So God's in the miracle working business, y'all. It's happening. I love you so much. We'll be on the uh, next promise next week. Invite a friend. Y'all, I'm ready to pack out both services in Jesus' name. God bless you. Go have the best week of your life. Jesus, you change everything.